It's Winter Picks Dinner Festival Edition. Hey, man, fam, we're back at Epcot for the Flower and Garden Festival for a special edition of Winter Picks Dinner, the show where we let rock, paper, scissors decide what we're going to eat. We've already spent two days at the Flower and Garden Festival and had a ton of food, but we want more. There's so much to eat and drink at these festivals. We thought it'd be fun to do a special Winter Picks Dinner, and I really hope I win a bunch of rounds because I've got my eyes some delicious eats. I, too, have my eye on delicious eats, so I would like to win many a round. I feel good today. I feel good. Tacos are in our future. We've got our festival passports. Let's get to it. Let's go. If you're new to Winter Picks Dinner, we are going to play rounds of rock, paper, scissors to decide what we eat during a multi-course meal. Now we're going to do it a little bit different since again we are doing a special festival edition and you may know that the food at the festivals is not full size appetizers, entrees, desserts, etc. So instead of doing the traditional courses we've done, we are going to do six different rounds. We are going to do drink, savory one, two, three, dessert, and drinks again. On this special edition of Winter Picks Dinner Flower and Garden Edition, we have added an additional caveat. If we have eaten an item on our previous Flower and Garden video, we, that is off limits for today. And as with our other Winter Picks Dinner videos, once a booth has been selected, it is off limits for future selections, so some strategy is involved. All right, first round. Drinks. Drinks, I have my eye on something. Got my mind. Same. Thinking. And it's thinking about watermelon. It's also thinking about lavender. I got lots of ideas. Watermelon and lavender? They're two different drinks, but I'm thinking about both of them. On shoot, right? Yeah. Ready? Yes. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. What is that? I don't know. That was like, that was like paper. I'm sorry. That isn't, you, that you decided halfway that through. That paper. That is not paper. That is paper. Uh, that is the scissor it selection. Is paper. Oh, mm, I think that calls for a redo. <laughs> what was that? Scissors, paper. 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 I didn't think for one second what I was gonna do. I just was <laughs> like watching your hand and was like, oh, oh I you need were to do something my with hand. my hand, and I just did this. Oh, uh huh. Yeah, we'll do Shall that again. Shall we go again? Yeah, I got it. I'm ready. We haven't played in a while. It's been a minute since we played this. You know what? Rock paper scissors hasn't changed. <laughs> okay. So ready. here we go. Ready. On shoot. Yeah. Rock, Rock paper, paper scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. There you go. There we go. <laughs> Why would you go rock again when I'm clearly trying to go paper? You aren't clearly trying to do anything. You're trying to tomahawk chop. <laughs> okay, well I went anyway. So. Yeah, after we're... some after some bamboozling. <laughs> now that I've won, the pressure is on to choose something good because there's a lot of good drinks we haven't chosen yet. I'm thinking about Germany because they have a beer flight. They also have a like champagne apple wine drink. That looks good, but if I choose Germany now, that eliminates Germany from savory, and they have a ham and cheese thing I was looking at. There's like a cucumber watermelon slushy that sounds good, but that might be too sweet to start things. You know what? We're going to the refreshment outpost. It's a very busy day here at Epcot. This is why we tell you to come on the weekdays, because it's a Saturday right now. But I gotta say, the weather is glorious. It's like 78. It's fantastic. Made it to our destination, Refreshment Outpost. Now, when Epcot opened in 1982, it opened up with nine of the 11 countries we have today. Everything but Norway and Morocco were opening day pavilions. But they actually intended for many more countries to have a spot here in Epcot. They talked about countries like Israel, Greece, Brazil. Eventually, of course, Norway and Morocco opened, but they haven't opened any other pavilions since. This space was supposed to be enough room for another pavilion or two. And since they never turned it into one, they've kind of turned it into this pseudo continent, really. It's kind of like vaguely Africa-esque. Here at Refreshment Outpost, you can get some items year round, like hot dogs and beers that they rotate seasonally, slushies. They also have frozen beverages, like frozen Cokes and lemonades. You can get one of the frozen Cokes with Amarula liqueur in it, which is from South Africa. It's delicious, but they have a few seasonal offerings as well. They've got some specialty beers for the festival, a specialty beverage, and one of the Garden Grays items, a pineapple with some tahini on it. But we're here for those drinks. Here are our very delicious looking beverages from the Refreshment Outpost. I have chosen the Lavender Martini. It's made with Boyd and Blair potato vodka, lavender, and lemon. And I got the Southern Tier Brewing Company Juice Jolt IPA. Let me just tell you, when I picked that drink up, it smelled phenomenal. I'm so excited. Cheers. Oh, okay. Ooh. 
Now that's pretty darn tasty. I'm actually not one that usually likes the festival pre-made cocktails. I lean more towards the beers. However, this one is very refreshing and not too sweet. It weirdly tastes like Gatorade, kind of. What? I'm getting lemon lime Gatorade with a little burn of vodka on the back. It's definitely floral, so if you don't like lavender or you don't like floral drinks, it's not super heavy, but you can taste that note coming in. But I think the lemon, doesn't it taste like Gatorade? A uh, quick behind the camera update. Yeah, it tastes like Gatorade. It tastes like lemon lime Gatorade with Weird. alcohol in it, which definitely never drinking at a party before. I believe you. Yeah, safety first kids. Electrolytes and alcohol counterbalance each other. Not kids, I'm not speaking to kids, they don't drink. Adults, 20 somethings in college, that's for you. Um, anyway, I've derailed. It's delicious. Now, it is a smaller pour than you would get inside a normal full-size bar at the parks, but it is bigger than a lot of the kiosks. If you're looking for a pre-made drink, if you're looking for something refreshing on a hot Epcot day, this is quite nice. And it makes me feel fancy because of the lavender sprig. This is incredibly aromatic. It also has a really, really nice citrusy overtone, almost some pineapple flavors to it. It has a decent amount of acidity, but it's not overpowering. It's not gonna trigger any acid reflux. But that is a very good juice forward beer. Um, honestly, like this is this is a 21 year old who's never had an, a beer before. This is their dream because it's just five degrees off juice. Dangerously sippable. It reminds me a lot of the Isla Nublar IPA at Universal that I like so much, but more juicy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Drinks have been gotten and consumed. Delicious. Next up is savory round one. You really want this taco. I really want the taco. Okay. On shoot. Ready? Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Bonk. Are we gonna get a taco? I don't know. Okay. We have a lot of options for savory, and I know Molly desperately wants the taco, but we have three rounds. We'll wait it out. Maybe. From China, we have the spicy peanut chicken skewers, which we got the sauce last time as a hack to go with your Rangoon but that doesn't qualify as the chicken. So that sounds good. There's a taco, as Molly mentioned. We also have shrimp and grits. We haven't done a lot of seafood. Maybe I'm feeling seafood. They also have a blackened fish slider from Florida Fresh. No, we're gonna go to Germany because uh, they have pretzel bread and I want pretzel bread. Carbs on carbs on carbs on carbs. The last time we were in the Germany Pavilion, we picked up the potato pancakes and applesauce for the Garden Grays. Now, it was not our favorite, but I have been given to understand from the comment section and our Discord, which if you're not in, you should definitely join, that it is a very traditional pairing. I'm willing to say that, you know what? I could give this one a second chance, but we can't do that today because it's been eliminated from our list. However, there is a delightful pretzel bread with cheese and ham that I am desperately looking forward to here. We have picked up this glorious toasted pretzel bread with black forest ham and melty Gruyere cheese. Would you look at all of that cheese? It looks like enough cheese for me. I, I normally go like when at an Italian restaurant and they're like, would you like some Parmesan? I'm having trouble finding the bread. Yeah, it's in there. And they're like, w tell us when to stop. I'm like, the answer's never, sir. Like, it, put an obscene amount. Put an amount that would make someone question my sanity. That's how much cheese I want. And this is, feels appropriate. I also want to point out that we are choosing to enjoy this by the glorious Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs topiary. I think one of the best topiaries of the festival, don't I you? I agree. You know what makes it the best? The fact that the eyes don't look dead and be staring into my soul. Like Bo Peep's. Yeah, Bo Peep's <laughs> eyes are that of um, a demon, really. And as it stares deep into my soul and burns it out from me. She's, she is a ghost rider. Well, I think it's the best because they finally brought back all seven dwarves a few years ago. For a while, they were doing just snow and dopey, but it's so much more fun when you have all of them. And after we eat this pretzel bread, I'm going to make us go pose like our favorite dwarf. Oh, I can't wait to do my best doc. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, tear this in half like a wishbone. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, you got you got the bigger half. Do, you, do your wishes come true now? I wish to win every single round of this. Cheers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. I have no regrets. Molly's best of the fest. <laughs> we already did that video. It makes the list. <laughs> okay, that is amazing. That was amazing. The pretzel bread, slightly toasted, so crunchy on the exterior. It has that same 
pretzel they actually have how they treat pretzels normally a little salty which was nice love that the gruyere is a nice offset with some richness and then what cuts through it all is the subtle sweetness from that black forest ham Ooh, it's so good there's kind of a nuttiness to that gruyere as well Absolutely. it's very complex for only having three ingredients it's like that's just stellar i don't really have anything else to say about it it's other than the fact that it's just phenomenal an incredibly balanced yeah. dish you should get it wow that's the fest and also Shout out to the band who's playing oh, in Germany yeah. right now. They're lovely. They're doing juggling and playing music, and they're from Germany, and they were great. So it was like live music, live entertainment, Snow White topiary, ham and cheese, a great situation we're in right now. Do you think they have a unicycle backstage? I could join them. Please don't. It'd be cool. What it? Unicycling is cool. Is it? I think so. Savory dish number two, I really want a taco. You really want a taco? I really want a taco. You want a taco? So badly. You want a taco badly? Yeah, I want tacos. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Neat, cool, so tacos may or may not happen. I have to think about it. Hello darkness, my old friend. <laughs> okay, we have time. There's another savory dish we could get. Tacos are an option. But then again, I we haven't had a lot of seafood. We know we're avoiding Italy. By the way, let's just go ahead and put that out there. Listen, Italy Pavilion, normally I love you. Via Napoli, delightful, but festival with maybe not so much. It really, for me, is a debate between the blackened fish sliders from Florida Fresh or the shrimp and grits from Brunch Cot. I'm flipping a virtual coin in my head. Shrimp and grits. So not tacos. Oh, yeah, no, not tacos. Shrimp and grits. Our last time at Brunch Cot, we got virtually everything but the shrimp and grits. We picked up the lox, the cinnamon roll bites, and the avocado toast. And all of those are pretty good, but the shrimp and grits feels like a must-have. And I must have it. Back at Brunch Cot, and we have picked up the shrimp and grits. That is blackened shrimp and cheddar cheese grits with a brown gravy and sweet corn salsa. I like all of those things individually, and I am sure that I will like them all together even more. I'm very excited. Now the key is getting everything in one bite, which I'm clearly doing an excellent job of. Cheers. Okay, first of all, that is delightful. There's a little bit of heat to it from the blackening seasoning, so if you're spice averse, you'll probably feel that spice. Not overly fishy. The shrimp is actually pretty good quality. I love the grits. If I had one knock against it, it is that I'm not necessarily the biggest brown gravy fan. If it were me, I wish it would be like a sawmill gravy with maybe some bits of sausage in it. But I understand why we went with the brown gravy. I think it adds a nice richness to the dish. Overall, super solid. It's not a taco, but it's pretty good. That's true. It's not a taco. On to the final round of savory. I need the taco. You got this. Are you ready? No. Okay. Here we go. On shoot. Yeah. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Okay, again. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for so long I thought I lost it. I thought Max took all the luck. Oh. Whew. This feels very patronizing. It's not. Okay, now the black and fish sliders have called my name. We could also try to redeem Canada and get the scallops. There is also the spicy peanut skewers. You know what? Let's just get some tacos. You mean it? I mean it. Let's get some tacos. The best thing about this menu Hello. is that the quesadilla was very, very good. So I have high hopes good, thank for Thank you. May I have the taco, the taco and Vero? Uh, yeah, the Bala Ibera Margarita. Wait, what? Thank you. That's it. That's it. We got, we got what? Thank you. What else did we get? Huh? What else did we get? Uh huh. You're very, very suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. I got a margarita too. I had uh -huh. to know. There's like nine flavors in this thing. I had to know. All right. Well, I was left unsupervised. <laughs> For just a moment. 
there are no tables available, so it has become trash can table, table time. time. It's, it's trash can, can table time. time. Well, our planned pickup was the Taco Vampiro, which is barbacoa beef and a corn tortilla with crispy grilled mozzarella jack cheese on the exterior with a salsa ranchera and esquites. And our bonus pickup is the Mala Ibera Margarita. So it's tequila reposado, elderflower chamomile tea, corn whiskey, and flour infused vodka with a chili salt rim. You see why I had to try this? That's so many flavors. What is the flavor profile I there? don't know, but I gotta know. That is a cacophony. It's either gonna be amazing or not. No in between. <laughs> really a coin flip. No in between. Okay, I'm looking forward to this. Pardon me. Get a little corn in there too. A little bit of salsa on top. We do everything in one bite. We're one bite Owens. Oh yeah. Hands down, one of the best parts about that is the crisp on the cheese on the exterior. The meat is incredibly tender, spiced really, really well. The salsa has a little bit of spice and acidity to an otherwise rich dish. And the corn is there really to act as a sweetener. Uh, All together, beautiful dish. I'd say this is right on the top half of the dishes I've had while at Flower and Garden. If you're a fan of Mexican food, you've got to pick this up. Uh, the textures and flavors are all beautiful and they work incredibly well together. Right? Wait a minute, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. And here's this drink. Oh. Uh huh. I need a minute to process that. So, what are your thoughts? I don't care for that. That's not for me. Um, if perfume was a margarita, it would be this one. It's very floral. Can't really taste the tequila. For having vodka, tequila, and whiskey, you can't really taste any of them. All I taste is the floral, perfumey taste, and a little bit of tea. And then if you get the rim, you get the, the chili. It's so different than that other lavender drink I had, which I really enjoyed, because there were floral notes to that too, but it was counteracted with the lemon and with the vodka, and this is just the floral notes. It's like the smell you smell when you walk into a perfume shop, it's like drinking that. I don't personally care for it. I think it's too sweet. I think it's too perfumey. You cannot taste the alcohol, which I think would help in this case to kind of counterbalance that. There's too much going on. That's a no for me. Stick to the Cristal Margarita and the taco and even the quesadilla, but that's that's a no for me, dog. It's a lot of flavors. Dessert. Okay. Yeah. You got this. I'm doing not great. You got this. I'm you like got this. Three to one today. It's all good. All right. You can bring it back around. Are you ready? Yeah. On shoot. I know. All right. Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. How does this happen? <laughs> How you doing? What's the meaning of life? And here we have the influencer who has recently begun to ponder her meaning of existence in this life and all others. Taking a introspective look, like the story of Narcissus, looking at the reflection in the water pool. Unlike Narcissus, however, she will possess the ability to look away. There's a fish down there. <laughs> yep, there are. Whoa, that one's big. Come and so, the, come the rising fish. from the fires like a phoenix, the influencer once again emerges come from her crisis. Get over here, look at that fish. And we must examine a fish. Look at how big that one is. Oh, it is a big fish. Look at that. You good? That's a bigger fish! We're good. Wow, that is a big fish. Hello, fishy friend. It's so wonderful to see you. You must be a bass. You could go bass fishing in this lake, you know. We could go bass fishing in this lake. So we can't have 
the cinnamon bites, the cinnamon roll bites from brunch caught for a variety of reasons. We can have the tangerine soft serve from a Fresh Mount Post. We can have the PB&J soft serve. We could also have the lemon meringue curd pie from Citrus Blossom. And I do hear tell of an orange bird waffle. That might be good. You know what, it just sounds too weird to not get. I kind of want the peanut butter and jelly soft serve. Okie dokie, we are back at the refreshment port where if you'll remember, someone who shall remain nameless insisted we pick up the shrimp scampi poutine. But that's okay because we're going to give refreshment port an opportunity to totally redeem yourself and that is with the peanut butter and jelly soft serve. I'm actually weirdly looking forward to this. After reading the menu, uh, I have noticed that it's a peanut butter and grape jelly swirl. So if you were so inclined, you could pick up just the grape jelly or just the peanut butter soft serve on its own. Honestly, if you get just grape jelly ice cream, I don't trust you. You're probably a serial killer. Hot take, hot take. Okay, well, the peanut butter looks almost natural. The grape, <clears throat> less so. Hello. Hi. Where are you going? I want to be your friend. Hi, you are so handsome. Hi. Now, wait a minute. Oh, sorry. Does that work? Hold on, hold on. Well, I'm genuinely surprised. Now, on the menu, it said to be served in a waffle cone. On alone, the grape is not the grape. Uh, but we got it in a cup first because apparently the structural integrity no, 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 pile it on there. Because the structural integrity of uh, the soft serve is that mm -hmm, God. Uh, it can't tolerate being in a cone, so we got it in a cup. Oh my God, oh my God. Wait, really? That grape is horrific. It oh, tastes on like its medicine. Own. Yeah, on its own, it's trash, but together with the peanut butter, somehow it works. The peanut butter works. I would get the peanut butter alone. The grape is bad. I think we can both agree. The peanut butter on its own is far superior, but together, together it's not terrible. It's certainly not shrimp scampi poutine level. No, it is. That grape is horrific. Well, it's good peanut butter. How? I don't know. Dig for it. B. Ratcliffe. I like it. Peanut butter, good. Grape jelly, okay. Soft serve, good. I don't care for this. I think the grape tastes too much like medicine. Tastes too much like artificial grape. I like the peanut butter a lot. I would probably get the peanut butter again. But overall, there are much better dishes and desserts at this festival. Do not waste your time with this. If you really want peanut butter and jelly ice cream, either go to 50's Primetime Cafe and get the milkshake, or go to Florian Fortescue's at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and get the strawberry peanut butter there because this is not it. Or just get the peanut butter soft serve here if you're a peanut butter fan. Just go get the strawberry shortcake. Do yourself a favor. Go get the strawberry shortcake at Florida Fresh and enjoy a delicious dessert. Or, or get the peanut butter soft serve and the strawberry shortcake. Or. And have them together. We did it. So let's try that out. All right, let's try to bust into this again. So we got the strawberry shortcake, which we did eat in the food and wine video from Florida Fresh, but we also got just the peanut butter soft serve. This also is, uh, we will break the rules For in service science. of a life hack and food science. science. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever been prouder of myself. Yeah, that was genius. First of all, this on its own is delicious. If you like peanut butter, this is fantastic. Do not get the grape jelly, save yourself. But this, plus the shortcake, unreal. Flower and garden hack, number one. Number this two. Combo. Number two. Number one was the peanut sauce. Oh, with the right. Fiber and Why don't all of our hacks involve peanuts? I'm just now realizing that as well. Because we're goobers? All right, well, that was delicious. Kudos. Thank it, you. It fixed the problem of the artificial grape because the strawberries were not artificial. And then it also fixed the problem of the biscuit being a little dry because you had the ice cream. 
That's fantastic. And that peanut butter sauce is on its own. Do yourself a favor, try that. Unless, of course, you have a peanut allergy, in which case, don't. And if you like artificial grape things, why? Um, but I guess if you do, look inside yourself and ask what's wrong. Um, but then after that, enjoy the grape saucer. It tastes like medicine. Drink round, everybody. And also, like, why are grapes so good and artificial grapes so bad? Like, I hate artificial fruit in general, artificial fruit flavor, but for some reason I'm most offended by grape. I think it's because it tastes like medicine and also because grapes are so good and wine is so good. Why is this so bad? You don't like Dynatap? Ugh. No. All right, are you ready? Drinks. Drinks. I have something in mind. Cool. Yeah. Are you ready? No. Here we go. Rock, rock paper, scissors, scissors, shoot. Again. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Okay, I'm very glad I won. And I gotta mull things over. I'm a little bummed once again that we can't pick things we already had because I loved the beers at Pineapple Promenade, so I'd probably pick that. Um, but I can't. So there's also a beer flight here at Northern Bloom in Canada we haven't tried. There's a beer flight in the American Adventure we haven't tried. Ooh. One of my favorite places in World Showcase. We didn't get a certain drink there last time because of budget. So we're going to France. Bonjour from France, which as you can see is always one of the busiest festival booths, no matter the festival. And that's because France is the land of cheese and bread and delicious wine. And you can't beat it. So there are these slushy drinks that they do in France year round. There's an orange one and a lemon one. And then they often add one to their festival menus that's a different flavor. Now sometimes they're a little too sweet for my taste, but this one in the past has been perfect and refreshing, so I had to make it my choice. Say hello to our final course of the game, drinks from France. I went for the La Vie en Rose frozen slush. It's got vodka, Grey Goose l'orange, Saint Germain elderflower liqueur, plus white and red cranberry juices. And I went for the Cronenberg Blanc 1664 draft beer. Okay, this is about as sweet as I can go as far as drinks are concerned. Um, it's a little sweeter than I remember even, but it's very, very good. It's nice and refreshing because you've got that tartness from the cranberry and there's a lot of different flavors going on, but unlike that drink from Mexico, it all works together. Nothing's competing. You've got the nice orange vodka and then you've got the elderflower, which is adding just a little hint of floral, but then because you have regular vodka too, it's not super, super sweet. I don't think I could drink this to start my day and I certainly couldn't drink more than one drink like this, but if you are a sweet beverage drinker or you're looking for something refreshing and unique, this is a great choice. Cheers. This is one of the most crisp, refreshing lager style beers I've ever had. The Cronenberg 1664 is in reference to when the Hat family actually founded the Cronenberg Brewery in Obernay, France. And based on my research, it is the fifth oldest beer brand in the world. And that technical know-how manifests itself wonderfully here. Honestly, it's just super refreshing. This is a great classic lager beer that's very high quality, so I'm a fan. Also in my nerdy research, have to know everything about the thing I'm having. Uh, the Cronenberg 1664 is made from the, I'm going to butcher this pronunciation, Strisselspalt hops, which according to Brewmasters is known as the caviar of hops. Cool. Well, that's a wrap on Winter Pick Center Flower and Garden Edition. If you liked this festival edition, definitely let us know. And I gotta say, despite losing every single food round, I still feel like a winner because I got to eat a taco. And I feel like a winner because of math. <laughs> and winning three, no, yes. How many did we play? You won four. Four. And I feel like a winner because of math. Because I won four out of six and additionally, we discovered a really cool hack with the peanut butter soft serve and the strawberry shortcake. So give that a try. Let us know if you like it as much as we did. You doing okay? Yep. But you got to pick some really delicious drinks and you got a taco. That's true. Hey, you know what? Maybe I'll win the next one. So let us know where you think we should play for our next game of Winter Pick Center. In the meantime, folks, be sure to like and subscribe if you're new, follow us on all of our socials, and be sure to join us on Discord if you want to talk directly with us and our community. The links are going to be found down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been Magically Delicious. Those are lucky charms. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>